Welcome back to the class, Computational Neuroscience, Neuronal Dynamics of Cognition. Before we continue with associative memories in a network of neurons, I would like to make a short detour and discuss magnetic materials. You may remember that a big magnet, in fact, consists of many small magnets in the sense that there are little needles inside the material, and in a very strong magnet, all these needles will point in the same direction. Now, it may happen that one or a few of the needles point in the wrong direction, but then it's just the interaction between these different needles that reconstitutes a pure magnet. And this is what I would like to discuss with you now. So, I will describe each little needle inside the magnet by a variable which only takes two states. It's either positive, then this needle has a value of plus one, or it's negative, then it has a value of minus one. And now there's a dynamics. So these dynamics say that the state at the next time step is given by the interactions with its neighbors. So the question now is, what's going this needle? Now this needle at position i has a value si at time t plus one, which is the sign of, and I just copy this formula, sum over j, and then I have the different sj's. Now, what are these sj's? I have here, for example, a needle sj, and this has a value of plus 1. That's my sj. But the other needles in the neighborhood also have this value of plus 1, so it's just a times plus 1, so I will have the sign of a times my value plus 1, and this means I have a result of plus 1, and this means that the needle is pointing upwards, so the new state is indeed aligned with these others. Now I can discuss this in a slightly different fashion. I can say, well, what's, what does this dynamics really mean? It means that the neighbors talk to this needle here, and this interaction weight is plus one. This interaction weight tells the needle here, well, you should be aligned with your neighbor. This neighbor is pointing upwards, therefore you should also point upward. So I can introduce here interaction weights, Wij, from neuron J to neuron I, and these Wij's would all have a value plus one. And now with this in mind, we can turn to a slightly more complicated configuration. In nature, we not only find ferromagnets, but we also find antiferromagnets. These are usually composite materials that consist of two different types of molecules that sit in the material in layers. So this is molecule type A, this is molecule type B, and then comes another A and another B. And now, the needles in one layer point upwards, the needle in the next layer point downward. And this is a natural configuration for this antiferromagnet. And now I would like to repeat the calculation from the previous slide and I ask this needle I sitting here, what is this going to do? And now I exploit the idea that neighbors talk to each other. So as before, I, can, I have positive interaction weights. I can say this neighbor talks to this one with a weight plus one. This neighbor talks to this one with a weight plus one. However, there are also other weights. That means a needle pointing downward talks to a needle pointing upward with a weight of minus one. And that means this needle also talks to this one with a weight of minus one, this one with a weight of minus one, this one with a weight of minus one, and also similarly from the other side. And now I can calculate the state of my needle at position i at time t plus 1, and I just take this formula. It's the sign of, and I have this big sum over all neighbors, wij sj of t. This is just a copy of the formula here. And now let's look at these. I have a couple of neighbors that have 
a value plus one, that would be these one, and they come in with the green in the actions, and the green in the actions are minus one. How many of these do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I have two others. They have a value of minus one, and they come in with a weight that's positive. So in total, I have my sine of minus six, minus two, it's minus eight, so the sine of minus eight is minus one, and this means that this needle is pointing downwards, and therefore it's aligned with all the other needles in the same layer. So here it's nature which has chosen these interactions. We have negative interactions and we have positive interactions. And because of these interactions, the natural state of this material is that we have layers with needles pointing upwards, followed by needles pointing downwards, pointing upwards, pointing downwards. So we get a rather interesting organized structure of the needle positions just by the interactions. And this is the idea we are going to exploit in the following. Now, instead of needles pointing upwards and downwards, we'll talk about pixels. And the black pixel has a binary value plus one, a white pixel has a binary value minus one. Now, if I want to store a certain configuration of pixels, I will choose interactions such that I have positive interactions between pixels that should both be black. It means this pixel talks to that pixel with the interaction weight plus one. It also talks to this pixel with an interaction weight plus one. Similarly, the white pixels talk to each other with an interaction weight plus one. Now, in contrast to the, the physical magnet, these interactions are supposed to represent axons, the neuronal cables that start at one neuron and end at the other neuron, and therefore interactions can be long range. A, a neuron here, corresponding to a pixel, representing the white pixel here, can talk to another neuron that's quite far away, and the interaction is plus one if both neurons should be inactive. Now the final point is that neurons that represent black pixels talk to neurons that represent white pixel with an interaction weight minus one. And similarly, a white pixel neuron talks to a black pixel neuron with an interaction weight minus one. So now we can repeat the argument that we did for the antiferromagnet. And we can ask now, suppose I have stored this pattern does a neuron that's representing the pixel i, this pixel i, and for which I don't know whether it's going to be in this black state or in the white state, whether it will have a value plus one or minus one, for such a neuron, can I predict the value it will take? And this is what I ask you to do in the first exercise. We represent a simple pattern corresponding to nine pixels, some of them are white, five of the nine are black. And uh, I would like you to construct the interaction weights. What happens if the neuron at pixel number seven currently has a state plus one, which is the wrong state? Would that be corrected based on these interactions? Please take a couple of minutes to walk th yourself through this exercise. Uh, this will help you to understand the rest of today's lecture.